You've been in California long? It's been a few years for me, but they still call me Oki. I came west when our farm stopped growing anything but a crop of dust. But when we got here, there were so many others here before us. Maybe you've got less need behind you. I hope so, for your sake. Anyway, I'm looking for a good laugh. Do you know any funny stories? My sides hurt. Joy. Oh, when we first heard they were looking for workers in California. <laughs> that was joy. We thought we'd get here and have our own home right away. And no dirt floor either. Anyway, know any good hopeful stories to share? I could sure use one. That's a good one. I'll try to remember it when I'm out in the fields. What's fortune look like? Well, back home the big farmers kept hogs. Raised alfalfa, had irrigation. Being rich and having enough that the dry spells didn't kill you. Anyway, these days my fears seem awful familiar. Can you tell me something scary that I haven't already lived? Oh, you spooked me pretty good. You've had practice, haven't you? Sorrow always goes down hard. Worse when it's a bitter kind of sorrow. Back in Oklahoma, we saved and saved to put a wood floor in our house. But the first winter we had it, we ran out of money for fuel and we had to chop that floor and burn it. Felt so bad losing our floor. Much worse than when we never had one. Mm, I've had a hard day. Do you know any hopeful stories to cheer me up? Thank you. 
Huh. And that's the saddest one you got? Heaven? When you can see heaven right across the road but can't get to it, that's the worst. There's some of us found the Los Angeles police waiting when they got to the California border. Had to go back unless they could show $50 in cash. The only people who could come in were the ones that didn't need to. Anyway, know any good hopeful stories to share? I could sure use one. Thank you for sharing that one. I feel a little better now. Travel. When I left home, you couldn't walk anywhere without taking a big cloud of dust with you. All that just came right along on the journey. After we'd been here a while, my husband wanted to go back to Oklahoma. But I knew there was nothing for us there anymore. I said I wasn't going back there to starve to death. So he took the girls and went without me. And now, I'm going my own way. Down the road this way, actually, to the next job. On and on and on. What about you? Where are you going? What are you leaving behind? hypnotic help me out here says the man I've been hunting this horse a long time extra pair of hands make sure she doesn't get the better of me she belonged to someone who wronged me Butch slipped out of this world before I could square things between us but damn did he love this horse he grins 
If she bucks real hard, haul on the rope. Buy me some time. He's dead. His old crew, though, they're still around. They'll bust a gasket when they see me ride in on his horse. His hand hovers over the handle of his knife. And then he grins. Let's get this done. He flicks the lasso, roping her neatly with his first throw. He presses the end of the rope into your hands and runs for the horse, slipping smoothly onto her back before she's realized what's happening. She fights, though, bucking hard enough to jar him loose. You keep her from throwing him off, and through your combined efforts, she starts to settle down. Thanks, friend. Shame, really. She's a good horse. I gotta send Butch's crew a message. He steers the horse carefully down to the road, hand resting on his knife. White Rider Green door clangs in the wind. Downstairs, you hear low murmurs. The wind again? Or voices? You were sure this house was deserted. In the living room, two young women are entwined atop a sleeping bag. One has her hands tangled in the other's bright red hair. <laughs> I can't believe we found another haunted house! The red-haired girl laughs. A floorboard creaks under your feet. Is it a ghost? One yells. The red-haired girl has jumped up between you and her companion, but relaxes her stance at your words. Well, if you're talking, you probably aren't a ghost, the blonde says. The red-haired girl looks to her then back towards you. What are you doing here? We're driving around, but Sam made us pull over for another night in a haunted house. Sam squeezes her hand. Come on, this is cool. There are probably bats in the attic. Your presence is not unwelcome, but the two only have eyes for each other. Your knees make a nasty, cracking sound with every step. Wandering this infernal city of steep hills takes its toll. Just over the crest of one hill, you find a stopped truck. Yang Chow, fresh fruit and vegetables. It's laden with colorful produce. You know anything about engine? Asks a man, obscured by the raised triangular hood of the truck. You come around next to him. One glance tells you that there's nothing obviously wrong with the engine. But there's smoke coming from somewhere deep behind and beneath it. The gearbox, maybe. 
Ah, never mind. He just slams down the hood of the truck, wisps of smoke leaking out of it. He sits on the edge of the truck bed, and you get a good look at him. He's tall, well-built, fans himself with his Panama hat. Sent my brother over to get a real mechanic, but... Well, I can barely keep this running as it is. Wish I still had the farm. He sighs theatrically, surprising himself with his own easy honesty. Sam Liang, landless, broke truck driver. Dad would have been proud. Well, it was my name on the deed. Had to be. But it was father who bought it. He shrugs, eyes fixed on a horizon you can't see. You already know what happened, don't you? Same thing that happens to everyone's farm. Had to. It was either the farm or the truck. I could keep growing them, or I could keep selling them. seen it circling overhead, its wings cutting across the sliver of sky you can see framed by the crowns of vast redwoods. But it's gotten closer. The cry that echoed from afar now seems dangerously near. And suddenly, the eagle swoops down, claws splayed before it. Wings spreading into a crescent of knife-sharp feathers. It dives at you like a bomber biplane, body contracting into a bullet racing groundward. You tell yourself you won't flinch. Something soft and incredibly fast brushes against your face. When you open your eyes, the eagle is climbing toward the sky already. A little forest mouse caught in one claw, wrinkled tail flapping in the wind. splintering crack of old growth breaking. A tall, broad man looms in the clearing. He casts a shadow almost as long as the trees. A handful of other men gaze at him with admiration. 
A slate blue bull stands to the side, slowly chewing on a patch of grass. God damn! shouts the second largest man, scratches his beard. Come on, stranger, give it a shot. Try your arm against old Paul here. He gestures to an axe lying atop a jagged stump. A couple laughs flow through the crowd. You strike out at a reedy spruce. The axe thwacks into the trunk and roots there. You wrench it out and swing again. Your rhythm is shattered by wood splintering. Your opponent has just cut through two thick evergreens growing close together in one fluid movement. Jeers and hollers go up from the assembled crowd. Knew you couldn't handle it, the bearded lumberjack crows. Don't even want to bother finishing. The huge woodcutter doesn't seem to mind the din. He just goes on chopping. trees dwarf even the largest buildings and homes here, and the inn is no exception. But you find its interior as dark as the forest outside. No one is behind the bar. The quiet of the night is broken by the sound of glass crashing into the floor. A huge black tomcat, its coat taking on a moonlit sheen, laps experimentally at the high-proof hooch that had just spilled. The cat pads silently into a darkened doorway, entering the back room of the inn. Its tail swivels behind it hypnotically as it moves deeper into the shadows. You light a match to see by in the darkness, but you still nearly trip on her. A woman, presumably the landlady, her eyes gone glassy and foggy. And on her chest is that damned cat, snout to her face, sucking in the air from her dead lungs. their high crowns. A strong musk, reminiscent of a gasoline spill, makes your eyes water. Behind distant sets of trees, a titanic silhouette lurches past. 
Broken lines of blood blotch the stranger's footprints. You come upon a maimed elk whose sundered antlers have left behind patches of exposed tissue. The sediment-covered corpse seems to have been dragged some considerable distance. The silhouette of the stranger looms at the edge of visible forest. You feel the weight of their eyes upon you. The stranger doesn't respond. They turn and walk into the fog. Lightning starts in the next valley over. Then the wind picks up, the long grass hisses, and suddenly it's raining so hard you can barely breathe without a hand over your mouth. The lightning momentarily illuminates a farmhouse on the opposite hilltop, the only one for miles. Much closer, though, is a silhouette of a dilapidated barn. You pound and pound on the door of the house, but you only get confused shouts from inside. Soon, you give up and head to the unlocked shed, where the empty wood bin makes a good enough bed. In the morning, you're woken suddenly by the sound of clattering china. A tiny old woman bends over you, silently offering you coffee. She serves you half the pot before she lets you get up and leave for the morning. finds you as you wander the streets. Come with me, child, she says, looking you up and down. We're going to church. 
you follow her to a simple clappered building. There's no steeple, but a cross is painted on one side. Inside, you sit for what seems like years as the preacher drones on about the various virtues expected of his faith. Brevity is not among them, apparently. You pass a meadow where migrants have made a campsite. It's been trampled to pieces. A few families are fleeing, running as fast as they can back up to the roadside. An enormous bull stretches himself beside some of their squashed supplies. The bull locks an eye with you and blinks long and slow. The closest thing to a cow threat you've seen in your life. You leave him as spoils. A bus roars up on the road behind you and slows to a crawl at your side. Inside, you can barely see people moving, dancing, swaying, strings of lights, strange smoke. Want a ride? The driver calls. Before you can open your mouth, a huge hairy hand, like an animal's paw, lands heavy on her shoulder. Not this one, a voice growls, so deep it vibrates your ribcage. The driver shrugs, and leaves you in a cloud of perfumed exhaust.
Here's a derelict school building. Shutters nailed shut. Wind-drifted dunes piled against the walls. Broken desks lined up in the basketball court. While you rest on the front porch, the door is open and someone gives a startled yelp. He's an older man, tidy and unshaven, carrying a toolbox in one hand and brandishing a broom in the other. Don't squat here, he growls. We're not abandoned. He gives you a hard look, but relents and joins you in the shade. I used to teach here, he says, staring off across the baseball diamond. Now they just pay me to keep the roof up. What's happening, stranger? Pull up a seat if you want to share. I guess my deal is pretty clear. You probably see a hundred long-haired, bangle-wearing freaks on the road every day. We're the only ones still hitching around, I guess. Bummer. Because this is a beautiful place when you take the time to smell the flowers, huh? But anyway, let's keep it grooving. Tell me something funny. <laughs> ah, you got a groovy sense of humor, stranger. Joys I had. Hmm. Well, I loved being a kid. Of course, I didn't know that at the time. Who does? I thought a scraped knee or ripped doll was the end of the world. But looking back, those were the days. So, you seen anything really hilarious out here? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one. Choice. My parents chose to support that war. Sending their kids over to die and worse, to kill. Burning and slashing and shooting. Anyway, you got any good hopeful stories about the world becoming a better place? Good. I'll share that one when I get back home. Yeah, free love. 
That's what it was all about. That's what filled my dreams as a teen. Why couldn't everyone see that we were all just here to love each other? So, you seen anything really hilarious out here? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one. And luck. That's what got him. The lottery is how they decided. My brother was born December 12th, and that was his unlucky number. They spun that drum, and out came his whole life. Spilling out in that jungle. So, got any good hopeful stories? Anything about what the world should be? Oh, that's a good one. You gotta tell me more about those folks sometime. My travels. Well, I've been on the road a while now, but I didn't get to travel as a kid. Not really. We moved a bit when my dad was in the army, but all base towns are pretty much the same. The first time I left was to go to the heat. Well, there it is. And I feel like I've been doing all the talking. But the sun's coming up soon, so I gotta get ready to go. Heard some interesting stuff about a group of folks getting by up this way. And where are you going? What's your deal, Seeker? What's the future hold for you? Two brothers stroll up to you in the street, wearing identical scowls and identical steel-toed boots. One spits in front of you. Don't stay in town overnight, the other says. No vagrants after dark. You hide in an alley, but around midnight you're woken by bright lights and a rain of boots. As they hurl you back onto the road, you catch two familiar faces in the crowd, this time smiling.
You weren't supposed to see this. Outside town, two men, identical, stand sentry over a third body half covered with a canvas sheet. Might as well grab a shovel, being that you're here, the man in front says. When you hesitate, he makes an appeal to your Christian charity. Your excuses don't hold up against the shovel whipped into your side. You collapse near the body. Before the second blow knocks you clean out, you see, inches from your own, the face of the corpse. It's their face. When you wake up, the body and the brothers are gone. So's your money. It figures. The bull lounges by this construction site, basking in the bitter sun. Upon his head is a silver crown shrouded in tongues of pale fire. Laborers periodically wander past, seemingly unconcerned. The bull catches your eye. You realize you've been staring. The bull arches his head languidly away from you. I'm waiting for my friend, he informs you airily. Now all the laborers are stopping and staring, feeling reproved. You mosey along. 